All right, lot number 32 behind me. You can see it's a portrait of some young man wearing a dress painted by some Burke who probably didn't have very much to do. It's rather cracked, so it's not very nice. Do I hear three, three pounds? Three pounds, three pounds going once, three pounds going twice, three pounds going right. All sold, three pounds for this rather crappy painting of a rather dull person. Will you stop looking at me? I can see you looking at me. Stop it. Three pounds. Sold. Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. Uh, my name is Guy and I'll be ripping off the famous artists uh, for all time. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> the painting behind me, of course, is the amazing Mona Lisa. Uh, or on Monday they call her Moaning Lisa. But generally speaking, she's uh, considered one of the most famous portraits of all time. Painted by a remarkable painter, inventor, creator, Leonardo da Vinci. Now, what a lot of people know about Leonardo da Vinci was that he was a famous Renaissance creator. He ran around um, sleeping with his shop steward and kind of keeping that on the down low because it wasn't so, so much a good thing to do back in those days. But he had a pretty good life. Kings and queens all over Europe paid him to do stuff, such as make bronze horses, paint portraits of these people, as well as to design siege works, weapons of mass destruction, the usual kind of stuff that you do during the Renaissance time period. But there was something rather unique about Leonardo da Vinci, insofar as that he wasn't really liked by a lot of people. And that is what we're looking at today, is how do you make sure that your character is likeable? You need to have a nice pap. And I'm not talking about any kind of test. I'm talking about a pap value. You need to have a character who is proactive, who is affable, and who is proficient. Now, what do those words mean and why is that going to determine exactly why we should like your character? Well, likability, as uh, we call it, what makes somebody nice? What makes us like someone? It's a very personal kind of question. And if you look at your friendship group and you go, well, why do I like so-and-so? Why do I like so-and-so? You have to ask yourself, what is their pap? What makes us like them? And these are the three components, as far as one can tell in doing research. It's proactivity, it's affability, and it's proficiency. We're going to unpack those and make sure that your character has them uh, in the games so that players, characters, and NPCs will actually like your character and won't want to push them off of a bridge. Incidentally, that is exactly what Leonardo wanted to do to Michelangelo, who was a contemporary of his, relatively speaking. Michelangelo was the younger of the two. He carved giant statues of um, very handsome young men for no particular reason whatsoever. And um, he and Leonardo had a little bit of a tiff going on, uh, to the point that uh, the Medici family, those famous, famous uh, families uh, of history, the Medicis pitched the two of them against each other. And they were so at war with one another, they hated each other so much that they both desperately started their work and then stopped halfway through to spite each and every single one of uh, their opponents as well as the Medici family. Anyway, we're not going to get too stuck on that. So needless to say, let's look at the first one, proactivity. Now, when we come to proactivity, proactivity means that you take initiative, you take steps, you do things, you make plans, you prepare, and you think of others and you share. You know, shares resources, shares knowledge, shares uh, little anecdotes about themselves. So when you are a proactive person, it means that you take initiative. Now, in a lot of games like Dungeons & Dragons, initiative means you go first. That's not what it means here. When you are taking initiative, it means that, let's say, for example, you are playing the cleric and the party has decided that they're going to storm a castle uh, that's held by a mad wizard. As a cleric, you might go, well, I don't have a lot of wizardy spells. If they were undead, I'd be very, very useful. So I'm not going to be hugely useful there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack healing potions. I'm going to pack bandages. I'm going to pack extra rations. Um, magic stuff, magic stuff. I'm going to take some balms that work against fire damage. So if the characters get burnt, I can give them some healing balms. Um, I'm going to, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I'm going to arrange for a wagon to carry us there so we don't arrive 
tired. I'm going to arrange for the wagon to meet us later on. I'm going to get fresh horses for us. I am taking the initiative to generate stuff for the party that the party hasn't asked for. That's the principal thing, is that the party is taking it for granted or that they just haven't thought about it, but you have, because you are planning and you're making preparations. So you're taking initiative. Now, how does this fit with the nine different types of character? Well, you don't have to necessarily be a supporter. You don't need to be someone who is there to to, to plan and, and uh, look after the party necessarily as a character. Uh, trait continuously but you can certainly think about and prepare what you you anticipate will be needed for that particular adventure if you're not on point this time round if it is your mission then your plan becomes very different and that's when you need to then think of the other players characters and you need to share your plan with them so often i have seen players who are on point it's their kind of mission it's the undead mission that the cleric is now leading where they don't share their plans with their fellow players they go no i got this guys i got those guys share it with them and suddenly you become a much more proactive character you become a much more likable character because now people know okay so you're going to share your ideas you've thought about us okay so during this lich thing the barbarian you really need to protect me so that i can keep casting you know destroy undead or whatever your incantation might be all right in this mission i might be the lead pilot but i need my wingmen i need you on the left and you on the right because we know they come in in waves of three i'll take out the first one you two take take out the ones on the side. Think about your other players and think about how you're going to include them in your plans, in your preparation, and then actually go and do it. Don't just think about it and talk about it. Go and actually make that happen. And then share whatever it is that you've planned, whatever you've taken the initiative to do, with others. So that's proactivity. And if you can do that in real life as well, people will appreciate it. But don't get it confused with generosity and being taken advantage of. If you're the one who's always left to make the plans, to make all of the initiative, to take the initiative and to kind of get people together, maybe it's time to find different people to start doing that for. Affable. Affable means that people are generally nice to people and people find you generally nice. There's not a lot of points here. It's basically you're friendly, you're open, you're light-hearted, you're supported, you're interested and you're invested. Nothing major at all, except for being possibly the most important foundation in any kind of relationship. If you're not interested in the rest of your party, why should they be interested in you? kind of goes without saying it. and yet so often I find that players don't ask their other characters player characters what they're doing why they want to do it what their goals are what are their ambitions what are their dreams it's as if they're not interested so why should they work together in the first place it doesn't make sense if you don't do this with your friends it shows that you're not interested that you're not invested invested means asking them how their day was even if you don't care you should still do it and then be interested in what they say because they're th theoretically your friends and you're trying to be friendly about the whole thing. Share your experiences. I learned that I overshared personally with some of my friends and they kind of went, <laughs> we are supportive of you. We are invested in you. We're not interested in that particular story. That's too much information. Find the balance and then stick to it. Make some jokes every now and again, but don't become the clown. Don't become the joker. That's trying too hard. Lighten the mood when you can, but that's not your job. That's one of many things that you could have when you're trying to be affable, when you're trying to be likable, when people want to engage with you. So think about that. If you're always, if you're a very quiet person, if you're a very reserved person, or your character is anyway, they don't necessarily mean that they're going to be friendly and open. They might be reserved and quiet, but they're certainly going to be supportive. Never let the buddy down. If the captain charges into the Klingons, you are right there next to the captain. You are supportive of their decisions. You don't question those decisions in public. Later on, though, you might pull them aside and say, listen... I was with you in that battle where we nearly died. I didn't think it was the good call to make. I think that perhaps a little bit of reservation would have worked better. Can I remind you of that next time you're about to make something a silly mistake? If they say yes, then that's fantastic. You've shown that you're invested, you've shown that you're interested, you've shown that you're supportive, and you've shown that you're friendly. If they say, no, 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 I'm in charge, it's my job, that's absolutely fine, and it's entirely up to them to make that mistake anyway doesn't matter. When they then make that decision, you should remain supportive, remain interested, remain invested, and then try and figure out why they did it again. And ask them, why did you do it again? We nearly died again. Is, is that what you find fun? It is what you find fun. If that's the character's answer, by the way. If the player's answer is, well, we're not going to die because the GM gives us plot armor, 
Uh, that's a whole different kettle of fish altogether. So think about that as well. It can be very leading in terms of these answers that people will supply you when you ask these kinds of questions. So it's, I think, a very powerful uh, system of, of regulating things as well. Then when we look at proficiency, proficiency is an ancient old word from Dungeons and Dragons, second edition. You had weapon proficiencies and then you had non-weapon proficiencies because in Dungeons and Dragons second edition, naming was a big thing. So weapon proficiencies and non-weapon proficiencies. It shows you the focus of the game in the original old days anyway. That um, proficiency basically means that you're good at something. So you could be capable you could be trying to advance yourself, or you could be trying to advance others. So you can express this, again, your character. If your character is capable, if they're a capable blacksmith, or they're a capable swordsman, or they're a capable um, starship pilots, let them do that. But show that they're trying to improve as well. I'm having so much fun with my players on the Windswift, because whenever time they level up, they spend several minutes, not hours, not sessions, several minutes where they're practicing the skills that they're going to get in the next level. Or they're practicing the skills they got from leveling up. It shows that they're advancing. Does it make for a better gaming experience? Absolutely. The one character was learning how to teleport or misty step for the first time and they accidentally teleported themselves by their own choice by the way off of the vessel into the seawater and had to be rescued it was a funny little moment where the character was like okay so we don't do that again then there was another one where they were pairing up as teams where they were sword fighting on deck and the one character got overzealous in terms of helping their fellow players and so would wake them up at an ungodly hour to say right it's sword practice let's go it created these wonderful moments, and those moments are what, in my opinion, define character. It defines the story. The stuff where the characters are actually on adventure, where they're actually going through plot, that's brilliant. That's wonderful. That's the basis of it, and to get that right, I think, is fairly easy. It's the inter-character stuff that I think is tricky, and that's where I think the real magic comes from, is that inter-character play. It makes them feel more real. Sharing their skills. Oh, uh, you want to fly a starship as well? Well, bring your character over. Let's sit yourself down. I'm going to show you how to do it. Again, it's about building those inter-character relationships. So we've get, we get this idea from, from proactivity, affability, and proficiency that there is this interesting scale of where we should be aiming for. We should aim to be proactive. We should aim to be affable. We should aim to be proficient. And we should always constantly do that. When we're not proficient, by the way, if we are bad at something, acknowledging that goes a long way to the advancement thing. Well, I'm not very good, but I will try because I'm supportive of the party. I'm invested in the party. I want to try and move the story or I want to try and move us forward. So I'm going to try my best and I might fail, but I'm going to do it anyway. So those are some of the amazing things that come out of a nice pap. Proficient, uh, proactive, affable, proficient. Aim for having three of those. Try and get them, and I say get them as high as you can. Try and use them, try and practice them as often as you can. And you'd be surprised at the results. Again, you've got to be very careful that you don't get people who are not proficient who take advantage of someone who's proactive. Now, when we look at NPCs as game masters, we use a similar kind of, of structure to make NPCs likable. But for NPCs, we restrict it to only two items. We don't make it all three, because all three is where the player's characters should be. That's where you should be shining. If we make it two for each of the NPCs, it gives us a reason to have them there, and it gives us as players something to latch onto. So you might get an NPC who is proactive and proficient, but is not very affable. So that's the grumpy blacksmith who makes extra armor straps because they know that you're going into a swamp and they're going to rot off, and makes them really, really well, but grumbles and complains that they never get any free time and they don't get to go in the swamp it's always only you get to go in the swamp but i've made you these extra straps that won't rot and because they're just better that is the type of npcs that we're aiming for and the gms are using the same kind of table so there's no reason why you shouldn't either to create a character that people actually want to play with and rather have a character that people want to play with than have a character that people go oh god really it's that one again completely useless never does anything doesn't tell any jokes, just sits there and uses up all our resources, doesn't share, doesn't follow orders, doesn't do anything really. Basically, you're, you're, you're not even good at anything either, so we really don't like you. Just go away. You don't want that. 
you want to have those in a good a good space and you can practice them easily just remind yourself hey be proactive how can i be proactive about this situation how can i make this situation better lighter can i maybe make a cup of tea for all of the players it seems innocuous it seems completely inconsequential it isn't it's about creating an amazing story and that is our ultimate goal so until next time i wish you and yours the very happiest of play so apparently that was a poster that we just sold for three pounds. Here is the original Moaning Lisa uh, on sale now for 300 million pounds. Um, I'll deduct 50,000 for every like that you give. I'll deduct another 50,000 for every subscription that you give. And uh, first person to hit that goblin bell will get the painting basically for free if you go onto an illegal website and download it uh, for free. It's yours. And... Sold.